Hello, welcome back to a quick little tip here how to use Arnold uh, Render with the uh, film effects inside Cinema 4D. So, uh, let's just make a quick uh, scene here. Um, I have a range, so I've customized a window where I have film effects and Arnold. So, let's see. I have my film effects properties here, my Arnold IP <coughs> IPR window over here, and I'll go up and set my render to Arnold Render. Above the camera, diffuse for don't have volume interact, it says zero, transmission zero. Take out the ray depth, still 10, that's good enough for me. So, let's add something to the scene. Let's add a film of his grid. Let's uh, increase it. And as, al as always, of course, remember your project settings. I am <coughs> uh, working with the uh, centimeters, so let's see, is that preferences no where is that is a scale project yeah current scale one equals centi one centimeter <coughs> all right and uh, we also have it here actually yeah project scale cool so let's add a source in there let's just uh, add a, a spear to the scene and it's of course it's huge Let's lower the scale. Bring it up a little bit and further get it down here, like so. So now we need to bring in an object source. An object source is the one is the source you need when you need to add any geometry uh, in here or a model you still build. <coughs> so in the object source tab, the spear is in here so the object and spear now we need to bring that into the film effects grid so inside film effect let's make some more room for ourselves go to object sources get it down here so now this means now the object source is inside film effects and inside the object source we have the spear so let's see go back to the film effects general uh, we want to make sure that we have the GPU enabled here, general, and right now we'll just start at 1.8 centimeters. The spacing is the one that <coughs> decreases or increases your detail level. This will also have a high impact on your rendering. Let's go back to simulation. Let's just with the default values try to hit the play button and see what's going to happen here. Yeah. So a little bit burning here and some smoke going on. Hit stop. And right now we have set it to Arnold render. So let's try actually in the API window. Hit play. And let's do like this. <coughs> Get some, let's see the big render here. How does that look? Yeah. So let's try to add some lights in here. Uh, so Arnold light, some quad light, and let's take it from the top. One like that, like that, and we also want it on the other side. Like that, so these two quad lights. Let's give it some different colors here. Now you see, now <coughs> I just hit play on the IPR window, so now you can see the smoke coloring is taking shape here with the yellow exposure. Let's take the other quad light. Do maybe a bluish, something like this. So now we have a little mixture here going on. And the quad light, I remember right now as it is in the film fix illumination. If you were using the normal uh, standard or physical shader, then you would be able to bring in your lights here. But with the quad lights, these options are not available. The multiple and scattering and step size because it currently it doesn't support Arnold lights, <coughs> but it will the, during this month. Arnold 6 will be implemented. So let's just remove that. But as you can see in here. 
it's perfectly fine in the window and also in your render just you can just you can just bring it into the actual uh, IPR window but you will have it out in your output final render so this is how it looks like right now and of course you <coughs> can always go in and play with the setting in here let's see let's add a little turbulence here detail levels up uh, scale to five simulate smoke uh, two to make it disperse <coughs> a little bit faster but not so much temperature points here to two dispersion strength here 0 0.9 And let's hit it now, see what we got. We have a little bit more violent temperature in here. Now we have the more detail because we bumped that up. Let's stop it and take a look at it again. Okay, so this is how it looks like right now. If you want much more detail, you're going into the film effects properties and under channel, you're gonna <coughs> decrease the spacing here. And that's gonna, of course, impact your simulation and render time. So if we go down to 0 0.5, 0 0.4, that will <coughs> dramatically change the look in here. Uh, let's see what we got now. So while it's rendered a little bit, I'm just going to pause it, but already now you can see the amount of detail level here. Let's go and actually hide this spear like that. Okay, we can stop it here. So this is what we got here now, and remember everything is a... Uh, <coughs> everything is editable right so that means you can also do some animation in here so let's just take a coordinates let's see what we got here from here up and then like so let's go back here stop the simulation Remove the auto keying and start the simulation. I'm just gonna hit pause here. So, as you see, we are only into 14 frames and it is still calculating. So, let's hit pause here. See what we got. Now, you can see we're getting the smoke trail really looking nice. If you really want to speed up your simulating, simulating then you have to go in and, of course, bump up the spacing, which was a uh, under the general tab and then you have it here spacing so if you just bump that up it's gonna look not realistic at all but that will definitely increase uh, increase the uh, rendering speed or at least the simulation speed just look at the difference right now let's, let's start from the beginning Yeah, so that was because it needed to be stopped completely. That's the most important thing also. When you're actually doing these, re remember to stop your simulation completely before you start again. Look how fast it is now. So that would be, give you a general idea how your <coughs> animation would look like. So uh, that was just a short introduction to this. Remember you can use effectors and even bend, um, like let's say you want to use some deformers up here, you will just add that into the scene and uh, it will work the same with effectors which are in here, you can also use that. So thank you very much for this short tutorial, I'll be back with another Cinema 4D film effects tutorial soon, bye.